As the gavel falls and the judge announces life sentences for members of the notorious hate group, the Ku Klux Klan, the courtroom erupts into a frenzy of emotions. Shock, anger, disbelief, and even tears are on full display as these convicted individuals realize the severity of their actions and the consequences they must now face. In this video, we bring you an exclusive look at the raw and unfiltered reactions of KKK members as they receive their life sentences. Get ready to witness some of the most jaw-dropping and downright crazy reactions you've ever seen in a courtroom. Jeremy Christian The story of Jeremy Christian's horrific crime on a MAX train in Portland is a shocking reminder of the dangers of hate speech and bigotry. Christian, a self-proclaimed white supremacist, began hurling hate speech and biased language at two black teenage girls, one of whom was Muslim and wearing a hijab. Witnesses reported that Christian continued to yell about decapitating heads, despite the train operator's threat to call the police. Passengers, including Micah Fletcher and Taliesin Namkai Mechi, tried to intervene and implored Christian to stop yelling at the girls. However, the situation quickly escalated, and Christian stabbed Fletcher, Namkai Meche, and a third passenger, Ricky Best, within 11 seconds. Best and Namkai Mechi died a horrific death, while Fletcher was hospitalized with a severe throat wound. Christian attempted to flee the train with the knife, but was apprehended and admitted to the stabbing. The tragedy stunned the entire Portland community, leaving many wondering how something like this could have happened. One of the casualties, Ricky Best, was an Army veteran and an employee of the City of Portland's Bureau of Development Services. His son quoted him as saying, I can't stand by and do nothing. Micah Fletcher, another victim, was a Portland State University student at the time of the incident and spoke about how Portland is supposed to be a community where people can be protected. He stated that he still has nightmares from the day of the attack. During the trial, Christian showed no remorse for his crimes and even tried to justify them. His outburst in the courtroom, where he cursed and threatened to kill a relative of the deceased who gave a victim impact statement, led to his being removed from the court. He was found guilty on 12 counts, including first-degree murder, assault, and hate crimes, and sentenced to two consecutive life terms without parole and an additional 25 years for other crimes. Travis McMichael, Gregory McMichael, William Bryan. On that fateful day of February 23, 2020, Ahmad Arbery set out for a routine jog in Satilla Shores, Georgia, but little did he know that he would never return home alive. His tragic demise was the result of a heinous racially motivated hate crime, perpetrated by three white men who took it upon themselves to play judge, jury, and executioner. As Ahmad ran down the quiet neighborhood street, he caught the attention of the McMichael father and son duo, who believed him to be a burglar. They quickly hopped into their trucks, with their neighbor William Roddy Bryan joining the pursuit. The trio chased Ahmad down, blocking his path and leaving him with no escape. As the situation escalated, Travis McMichael, armed with a shotgun, confronted Ahmad and assaulted him. The young black man tried to defend himself, but Travis McMichael ultimately shot and killed him in cold blood. The entire altercation was captured on video by William Roddy Bryan's cell phone, leaving no doubt about what had transpired. Despite the Glen County Police Department arriving promptly at the scene, the three white men were allowed to walk free for more than two months, thanks to direct orders from the district attorneys. It wasn't until the video footage of Ahmad's murder went viral on social media, sparking outrage across the globe, that the Georgia Bureau of Investigation made any arrests. The treatment of Ahmad's case by local authorities ignited a fiery debate about racial profiling in the United States drawing attention to the injustices that many minorities face on a daily basis. The murder of Ahmad Arbery was met with widespread condemnation, with religious leaders, politicians, athletes and celebrities alike voicing their outrage at the blatant injustice. The subsequent legal proceedings saw former Brunswick District Attorney Jackie Johnson indicted for obstructing law enforcement and showing favoritism towards her former deputy, adding fuel to the fire. Georgia Attorney General Christopher M. Carr called for the FBI's assistance in the investigation, and justice was eventually served when the three white men were found guilty of felony murder, aggravated assault, false imprisonment, and criminal attempt to conduct false imprisonment in November 2021. They were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus an additional 20 years, 
while William Roddy Bryan was given life in jail with the possibility of parole after 30 years. However, as the sentence was read, the convicted men showed no remorse or reaction, a stark reminder of the cold-hearted nature of their crime. Ahmad's death sparked changes in Georgia's legislation, with the state enacting hate crime laws and repealing and replacing its citizens' arrest law. Sadly, racially motivated hate crimes are not limited to Georgia. Oregon witnessed a similar tragedy when Russell Courtier committed a despicable act. Joe Torres and Kayla Norton. Kayla Norton and Jose Joe Torres, both members of the white supremacist group Respect the Flag, were sentenced for their despicable attack on an eight-year-old black child's birthday party in Georgia. The assault was filled with racial obscenities, firearms threats, and the flying of Confederate battle flags. Norton, Torres, and other members of Respect the Flag went on an alcohol-fueled racist binge in Douglas and Paulding counties west of Atlanta in July 2015, just a month after a racist shooter massacred nine worshipers in a historically black church in Charleston, South Carolina. The group threatened black motorists before arriving at the outdoor birthday party. Phone footage of the attack shows police attempting to form a barrier in front of the families as the truck sped away. Following the attack, a Douglas County grand jury indicted the Respect the Flag organization as a street gang. During the trial, Norton sobbed in the courtroom and apologized to the victim's families. She accepted responsibility for her actions and apologized to the families who had attended the birthday party. The judge sentenced Torres to 13 years in prison and seven years on probation, and Norton to six years in prison and nine years on probation. Both are also barred from entering Douglas County. Russell Cordier. The death of Larnell Bruce Jr. at the hands of Russell Cordier in August 2016 shook the community of Gresham, Oregon to its core. Cordier, a member of the white supremacist prison gang European Kindred, ran over Bruce with his Jeep in a violent altercation outside a 7-Eleven, causing serious injuries that ultimately led to Bruce's untimely death. During the trial, prosecutors presented evidence indicating that Cordier had a deep-seated racist desire to be part of a brotherhood, leading him to join the European Kindred gang. They pointed out that Cordier had a European Kindred tattoo on his leg, displaying his affiliation with the largest racist prison gang in Oregon. The jury found Cordier guilty on three counts of murder, failure to execute driver responsibilities, and violating Oregon's hate crime law. Prosecutor David Hannon stated that the life sentence was warranted since the jury determined Cordier was motivated by his opinion of Mr. Bruce's skin color or race. This verdict should serve as a reminder that hate crimes have no place in our society. At the sentencing hearing, Bruce's family was present, and his birth mother, Christina Miles, confronted Cordier, questioning him about his actions and the motives behind them. She spoke about the pain and anguish that her family had endured since Bruce's death and how they would never be able to fully recover. Despite all of the evidence presented about how racist Cordier was, his girlfriend, Colleen Hunt, admitted allowing him to use her Jeep to track down Bruce. She pled guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to 10 years in prison for her role in the crime. Russell Cordier was sentenced to life in jail with a minimum of 28 years before he is eligible for release. This punishment should serve as a warning that hate crimes have no place in our society and that those who perpetrate such crimes will be brought to justice. Edgar Ray Killen. Edgar Ray Killen was a notorious Ku Klux Klan organizer who orchestrated the 1964 assassinations of three civil rights activists, Michael Schwerner, Andrew Goodman, and James Cheney. Killen and a group of armed men, including the deputy sheriff of Neshoba County, plotted to murder the three activists and successfully carried out their plan. Unfortunately, the state of Mississippi made very little effort to prosecute the perpetrators, leaving the case largely unsolved for decades. It wasn't until investigative journalist Jerry Mitchell spent six years writing extensively on the case that new evidence and witnesses were uncovered. Mitchell's tireless work led to the convictions of other high-profile civil rights-era murder cases, and he used the same methods to gather additional evidence and find new witnesses in the murders of the three civil rights activists. With Mitchell's help, the case gained national attention, and Congress was lobbied to take action. Mitchell even developed a website to raise awareness and worked with high school teacher Barry Bradford and three Illinois students to interview Killen, who gave his only taped interview concerning the murders. During the interview, Killen displayed his segregationist beliefs and appeared knowledgeable and aware of his actions. 
Thanks to Mitchell's efforts and the collaboration of other advocates, Killen was eventually brought to justice and convicted for his role in the murders. Despite finally being convicted of three counts of manslaughter in state court and sentenced to 60 years in prison, Edgar Ray Killen continued to try to evade justice. He filed an appeal claiming he couldn't use his right hand and was chronically bound to his wheelchair and was bailed on a $600,000 appeal bond. However, a deputy sheriff later observed him wandering around freely and he was returned to prison. In August 2007, the Mississippi Supreme Court upheld Killen's conviction, finally putting an end to his attempts to evade justice. Killen died in the Mississippi State Prison in 2018, having spent the remainder of his life behind bars for his heinous crimes. The case of Edgar Ray Killen serves as a stark reminder of the deep-seated racism and hatred that has plagued America's history and the long struggle for justice that has been fought by countless individuals and groups. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Watch this next.